This particular one that is set up in front of us is to investigate how the stretch of the spring will depend on the load attached to the spring. In the first instance, what you need to do is attach a pin to the spring to act as what we call a fiducial marker. Just to make this experiment accurate, what you need to do is line up your head with the scale so that the image in the mirror lines up with the pin. And that will give you an accurate reading on the scale. This idea is to reduce the parallax error. Once you've got your scale reading at the start, attach a 100 gram mass to the end of the spring. A 100 gram mass is equivalent to a force of 1 newton. Attach the mass to the end of the spring and you'll notice that the pointer will come down. And once again, line up your head, line up the image with the, the pin and read off the scale read. You then continue to do this with a second mass, allow it to come to equilibrium and take the new reading. You will be provided with a set of instructions and what we would like you to do now is to carry out this experiment to investigate how the stretch of the spring depends on the load attached to it. Here is just a sample of results uh, taken earlier. You take the scale reading, i.e. the reading of the pin against the scale, and let's just suppose that is at 120 millimetres. You attach the first load, and the new scale reading is now 124. If I subtract the 120 from the 124, I get a stretch for an extension of 4. Now, when I attach the second load and I get a new reading of 128, it is a common mistake to think that the stretch of the spring is 4 millimetres in this case. I'm afraid it is not. You subtract the original length, or the natural length of the spring, from the stretched length, to get the new extension, which will be 8 millimetres. You then plot a graph of the load against the extension. And some of you may think that the extension is your dependent variable, and you should really be plotting the independent variable here. But for, for ease of analysis, to plot the load against the string. And of course, you will have your readings, your plot your readings, and draw the line of best fit. If you work out the gradient of this graph, the gradient of this graph will allow you to work out the spring constant. And you may be familiar with this expression. So, now this is of the form y equals mx, m is the gradient, and the gradient gives you the spring constant. Now, in new GCSE examinations, you may be required to work out the uncertainty here. And if you watch a later video, uh, you will be shown that you, once you've drawn your line of best fit, you can draw a line of worst fit and take the difference, and it will give you the margin of error between your calculated value of the spring constant. To complete this task, I'll leave you with a challenge. Ask yourselves, how would you find the energy stored in the spring? 